Hey everybody, it's Casual Boops coming at you with another video, and today we're gonna we're gonna cover the T95 slash FV4201, also known as the Chieftain, the tier 10 British heavy tank that is a reward tank, and you can only get it from playing Clan Wars campaigns and placing in the top, I don't know, some amount of players, or you can get it in a bond auction if you play five games. In uh, in the campaigns, uh, the Clan Wars campaigns, you can play five games, you can and you can bid on it. Um, and I had planned on making this video to say, hey, this is a reason you should play the upcoming campaign because uh, at the time of recording this, the the winter campaign has been announced for 2021, uh, the Renaissance campaign, I suppose. And um, in that announcement, they also announced that the Chieftain would not be available. Uh, so, lol. Anyways, <laughs> I guess what I'm going to be showing you here is instead what you could have gotten or should have gotten before or make you just kind of drool about and be salty about what you're not able to get out of the next campaign. Because uh, uh, if you do play the campaign, I'm sure you'll see a lot of these things because it is it is Clan Wars meta. So, anyways, uh, we'll just hop right into the stats real quick and I want to compare it to the Super Conqueror, the uh, Tech Tree British heavy tank and one of my favorite tank, tier 10 tanks in the game, um, which actually was replaced. I, the, the, the Chieftain kind of replaced a few tanks meta-wise uh, in Clan Wars, but one of the things that made me sad was that the Super Conk was replaced basically by the Chieftain. You don't see those very often. Uh, you don't see Super Conks very much anymore. But anyways, the, the Chieftain, what, what is it? You know, it has worse DPM, has better, better, um, better alpha damage, better penetration. Um, you know, you can see here it's a little bit of a mixed bag, right? There's some things that are good or better. There are some things that are worse, and this is why I like the Super Conk better, personally. I don't really care for my Chieftain, but that's a bit of a hot take. Um, 10 degrees of gun depression is excellent. If you've ever been beat up by one of these things, you'll understand. Like, it just does a little bit of everything pretty well. And um, the turret armor is excellent. I mean, the, the turret on the Super Conk is also very good, but it's mostly relying on... Um, the armor is okay, then it has those spaced armor uh, kind of riot shields basically on the front, and and uh, so it doesn't do very well against HE. Well, the Chieftain kind of does because it has more of a big slab of armor rather than, you know, bits of spaced armor and stuff. So um, it doesn't side scrape as well, interestingly enough. Um, I, I like the Super Conk better for side scraping. Uh, but yeah, so it's a very strong turret, and this this is why. You're, this um, Well, first of all, the fire chance difference you do notice. I've been set on fire in my Super Conk a lot, which is why I have a no smoking sign on the uh, on the engine deck. But this is why the Chieftain is used over the Super Conqueror, right? All these things, it's like good enough, right? The alpha damage is great, and it's, um, it's, it's better enough at the Super Conqueror, uh, better enough than the Super Conqueror at enough things, uh, and then it also gets more speed, right? So this is the big thing. The, the the better power to weight, this is bordering on medium tank levels of power to weight, and then 46 top speed means that it can, it's it's now like peppy, right? It's it's one of the fast heavies, right? It's So this is the thing, it can flex around the map, not quite as fast as mediums, like like the Chieftain, uh, I think the Chieftain goes 46, but you can get a you know, 907 goes 50, right? So that's not that different. So the, the reason this is used is because it's just so stupidly fast for as good as it is. And then it does everything else well enough, right? Uh, so quick to get to the armor model here. Um, it is, it, it's, uh, it's scary. It's really scary. You can't really side scrape in the thing very well. I mean, as soon as you do, you're, you're, it's, it doesn't really work that well. But good God, I mean, even shooting gold rounds at this thing, the turret is just scary. You have this tiny little cupola, but anybody who's playing these things and knows what they're doing is going to do is going to be looking at you sort of like that. And good luck, right? The answer is good luck. So the the hull is pretty, you know, the upper hull is pretty good. The lower hull, uh, you know, the lower front plate is weak. But if, if you uh, see this, that means that the chieftain player is doing it wrong. Um, I guess there's this underside of the turret, but this is that you you don't see this like the, the, the visual model. It's just obscure. Yeah, it's obscured by the tracks. I've never been like, oh yes, this is the spot I should shoot because it looks like you're gonna hit tracks instead. So basically. When you're hauled down in this thing, you're basically God, and uh, <laughs> that's, I don't know that that's really good for the game, but uh, here it is. Anyways, so, um, yeah, that's that's basically what there is to say, you know, uh, when you get to the side of it and the rear of it and stuff, um, you know, it becomes less of a, uh, or, you know, if, he, if he's playing poorly... Uh, then you can pen the things, but like generally speaking, if you if it's hull down, you, you kind of lose. So uh, what do you do about this thing? Well, uh, 
go around. I don't know, shoot HE at it or something. Like, there's not a lot of good ways to deal with one of these things if they're looking at you like this. So that's really unfortunate, and I don't think very good game design, personally. So anyways, without further ado, we will get into the gameplay. All right. All right, so we're going to start off, and uh, we're going to be playing on Mountain Pass, and we're going to be following Knob Sniper, playing in his Chieftain in a game with, uh, let's see, two artillery. Uh, we have a wheelie boy, they have a GSOR, so so we win. And uh, it's otherwise, there's tier 10s in the game, not too many tank destroyers. Uh, you know, just it's, it's a pretty vanilla standard game. And you're seeing the speed, right? So the, the Chieftain's, it's supposed to be capped out at like 48, right? But 46 or something like that? But you could see, Knob Sniper was doing 50, right? So this thing is just fast. Um, and, and he's able to take these this really, really aggressive position. He's taking right going right across the bridge before anybody on the other team even gets there to stop him or do anything about this. Like, if Knob Sniper would be doing this in a Super Conqueror, he would be back probably maybe just now, maybe now, getting to the bridge. And he would be caught out by this T-54 and he would probably die. But since he's in a Chieftain, he could be way up, right up here in your face. And now this T-54 thing says, Oh God, I've made mistakes. And it's true, because... Knob Sniper is using this hull down position here to just become basically immune. As long as he wiggles a little bit, um, you know, to make that cupola not quite so easy, he knows this T-54 has nowhere to go. So I will say that this is, um, this position that Knob Sniper is in, oh, okay, we proxy spot something. The, this position that Knob Sniper is in only really works because, uh, nice, right to the lower plate of the Panzer Seven. You gotta, you gotta angle the lower plate of that thing and it becomes pretty good, but if you don't angle it, it's bad. Um, the only reason this really kind of works is because there's an E-50 behind him, right? Because this is the drawback of being in a fast tank in a pub match, is because you do need support, right? You need um, somebody behind you to help make sure they don't that the enemy team doesn't just run you over, and luckily Knob Sniper has that, but... It's, I don't know, maybe it seems like it just happens to me, but it seems like whenever I play pub games, uh, I just, uh, I run out to a position like this that's really, really good, and I do what I can, and then uh, I get these five or six tanks, they just run right over me. And to be honest with you, that's what the enemy tank should be doing right now. Like, this could be considered like a case study in how not to fight a chieftain, because all they need to do, there's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, how many, there's, there's at least four tanks there, and the E50 DPM is not very good. So really what they need to be doing is just driving forward, killing Knob Sniper, and then continuing forward to kill the E50, but because this is a pub game, nobody wants to damage their paint, and they're all just trading in the worst possible way, uh, they just, he, Knob Sniper just gets to sit here and keep using the, you know, he, he is side scraping. Um, He's apparently better at this than me because I can't side scrape in this thing worth a crap. But uh, yeah, we're just just plugging away, like looking for the pixels and the, just trying to chip away while our, our enemy team slowly kind of withers. And Knob Sniper is gathering enough attention, right? The enemy team is aware of him and they're trying to take him out. So in doing that, they're not paying attention to other flanks as much as they should, which is kind of allowing, like, this was, let's, like I said, this was like four tanks that were over here against Knob Sniper and an E-50 backing him up. So that's it. So with that in mind, like, everybody else should have a few more tanks to, uh, you know, they should be able to overmatch elsewhere, right? So like on the Ice Road, we had, let's see, I don't know, one, two, three, now, four. We had four, and that was, and then there were only two enemies at first, and anyways, you get the point. So, this Panzer 7 is now doing it wrong because he is now side scraping, and that's what happens when you side scrape in a Panzer 7. And, um, gosh, I'm, I'm at the time of recording this, the, the, the final spark mission thing is happening, and I don't know if it, if, I'll probably release this after it's finished. And God, I hope that the Panzer 7 didn't win because that tank is so awful. It's just awful. God. Um,. And so now the Sniper now just gets to basically drive forward and eat this T-54 because he's got all these hit points. Like, what are you going to do, you know? You just get to use the speed and, and the T-54 can't do anything about this. Uh, <laughs> Artillery decides to uh, donate some hit points to the Knob Sniper, um, you know, retirement fund. I don't know, never, never ram in your artillery. That's just not, or at least not that artillery anyways. And yeah, so now it's cleanup time because we have this flank... Uh, you know, basically we're looking at things that have to turn around to see us, and so when they turn around and look at us, our T-62 and T-30 over there get to, uh, get to do the things, and 
Yeah, Knob Sniper can afford to just sit and aim that shot because he has, again, he has all these hit points. He sat there and blocked 3,700 damage because, you know, puppies apparently don't know that you don't bother, don't even bother shooting a hold down chief. Wow, and what a shot. <laughs> so, this is pretty disgusting. So far, Knob Sniper's at almost 7,300 damage. And, uh, you know, that's, I will say that the accuracy, right, you're seeing some of the accuracy. He did whiff some shots, right, and that was one of them where I, in a Super Conqueror, you wouldn't be able to get into the positions that Knob Sniper did, but if you did get there, the, the Chieftain whiffed the shots and the Super Conqueror would not have whiffed the shots. So that's the trade-off, right? It's, the Super Conqueror is slower, but the gun is just god-tier amazing. And this one is just, like, fine. Like, it's a fine, it's a fine tank. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a really good tank, but, like, the accuracy is just kind of blah. Um, but again, it just does... It's fast enough, and the turret is good enough, and the gun is good enough. So this is why, like, really the thing that sets it apart is the fact that it's so fast. And, you know, the armor is pretty good, but the gun is really nothing special, to be honest. There's plenty of better guns at, the, at Tier 10, or, you know, if, probably even find some better guns at Tier 9, to be honest. But because the entire package is a tank that is fast with a good turret, that's what makes this thing so good in so many different situations, and that's part of the reason that it is used so ubiquitously in Clan Wars. It's just everywhere, so... Anyway, so at the end of the game here, Knob Sniper manages to pick up 7,600 damage, 5 kills, 3,700 damage blocked. This Again, this was a case study on how not to deal with a Chieftain. Uh, he gets a Steel Wall because lol, uh, the high caliber, and only a first class because a lot of the things he was shooting were, were uh, you know, tier tier set, uh, sorry, tier 9s and stuff. And it's just also the ace requirements for this thing are sky high because it's a very good tank and very good tank. Very good players have it. Uh, so anyways, that, that lands Knob Sniper with 1,263 base XP, which again, that's uh, for, a, for a tier 10, that's very, very good. And um, unfortunately, because Knob Sniper was shooting a lot of premium rounds, he only, and he had, actually ended up costing himself 58,000 credits. Um, but I imagine if he'd run a booster or something like that, it probably would have offset a bit. So anyways, that's the game and congratulations to Knob Sniper and thanks for sending in the replay. And um, hopefully this has helped you guys to figure out um, <laughs> I guess maybe on the next campaign in the summer, maybe you'll get a chance to get one of these things or whether you want one, or if you're facing one of these things on the battlefield, you can know, I guess, how not to deal with them, which is don't let them sit hull down. Good God, go, go pressure them or something. Like, just don't let them just sit there and shoot you. Good God. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Thanks. Bye.